He was tempted once and he failed. How many times was Jesus tempted? Eh? Three times. What was the first test that Adam had? He was tested with food. Hello? Did he fail? Is there anybody here today who will tell me he has never failed this food test? Eh? No, I've never failed this food test. Tell me now. You've never failed. You have failed. But Jesus too was tempted with food. The, the saddest aspect of it was that we were not told that Abraham was fasting when he, this test came. But Jesus had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Some of us, these 50 days, I'm going to do 50 days this year. But the day you want to say, you are, you are prepared, you are going to do 50 days. That was the day somebody is doing bad day in your office. And to now make matters worse, where they are looking for, where they are going to put the food, they just mistakenly put the thing on your table. And you are still struggling. Then you are now praying in tongue. That was when they have not opened the thing. Oh, you are just imagining what could be inside this pot. You are imagining, is it a goosey? Is it a furry robe? But you can see it's vegetable. Is it onugu soup? Is this a dikai corn? All of a sudden, they open the thing. Kana ah! Christians. Lika. Three fundamental areas where we can be tested as human beings and as Christians of today. Food, comfort, and power. Those are the areas that Jesus too was tempted. Jesus was tempted with food. He passed. He was tempted with comfort. He passed. Then he was tempted with power. Church, this is an area I want us to examine today. All of us go through this test by the day. We cannot comfort, power. It's a true, they said the true sign of a man is when power. Because you see, some of you now, you are here today because you are not. The, if you are, by the time you become local government chairman, now you call Pastor Patrick. Pastor, Pastor, I learned to organizing a Rila class on a Saturday. That's when we have our political meetings. Church, Jesus passed this test. I pray for you and I pray for myself. When next you are tempted, may you pass in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus survived and passed all the tests. Praise the name of the Lord. Cain and Abel. Cain was the flesh. Why Abel is what? The spirit. Cain killed Abel. What was Abel's offense? Huh? Because he was accepted of God. Don't we envy each other when somebody is doing well? Praise the name of the Lord. Enoch lived a pleasing life and God considered him too good to die. So the taking away of Enoch is a type of how God will take us away by rapture. He was God. So please, I want to beg you. Remember, this race is of God, it's not of man. A lot of us are comfortable when men judge us. We are comfortable when men are the, are, are the determining factor of this race. But remember, it was God that saw Enoch. The Bible says, and Enoch walked with God. It was God that said, look, this guy is too. So please always remember in this work, God is the judge. He's the ultimate. So stop living your life pleasing man. Strive to live a life that will be pleasing unto God. So that God took away Enoch physically before the flood. So that the, that's the way this church will be taken away before the great tribulation. Praise the name of the Lord. 
Praise the name of the Lord. Now let's look at the ark. In Noah's ark, what were the contents of the ark? Inside that ark, lion was there, leopard was there, mosquito were. <laughs> Did they fight? That is what it will be like in heaven. No, that is what life will be like in heaven. <laughs> now, what I'm trying to say here is that uh, could you have imagined all of them being in one? Imagine in this room now. There is elephant, there is lion, there is a hippopotamus. And they were able to, God kept them as one. Hmm? And that's what will happen when we get to heaven. That's the union we have in heaven. Because have you ever imagined... And that's why it's good to follow God and hear from God. Because if Noah had wanted to use his human reasoning, he would not have built that ark. And a lot of us still reason it out. Pastor, is it tight? Should it be gross or net? God told Noah to build such a massive ark. What was the size of the window? Have you ever looked? And where was the window going to be? At the top. A lot of people were, ah, what about all the pool and all the odor and everything? Yet, Noah obeyed God to the letter. May you obey God from this day henceforth. The grace to obey God. Sometimes obeying God can look so stupid. And the reality is, if you are going to live a life called of God, God will ask you to do some foolish and stupid things. It hasn't, it had not rained when God asked Noah to build the ark. And only God knows the kind of insult people do. He's not a carpenter. He's not a carpenter. A lot of us will justify it. God, you know I'm not a carpenter. Several times God will ask you to do something for him. But the quickest way out is, uh, thank God. A lot of times there's a need in the church. You are the one that, but, uh, uh, some say, I will work on one day. Whereas if it's God, if it is God, God knew your state and he, he has details of your credentials. As I said, the introduction, how are you going to introduce me? So I don't want to die. I am by grace what I am. And this is grace of God. Because when I look at my life today, even being here today is grace. Beloved, I want you to take this Bible serious. You are here today. I think there's a purpose behind your being here. It may look academic. For some, it's for coordination. But I want you to see beyond that. That God could be called to you, calling to an assignment. Such that you don't even understand why. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, God tested Abraham just to be sure that, look, if I, Abraham could pass, let me see if human being can relate. So, God tested Abraham. How many times was Abraham tested? It was said, did he pass of it? Jesus passed too. Abraham passed. And Jesus too. Christ Jesus too passed. Now, the sacrificing of Isaac. You know, when you get home today, I'm not forced to have a 17 year old boy. You have a 17 year old boy. Mommy, come. Come. You have a daughter. When you get home today, as you are going, buy rope. <laughs> buy rope. Then buy knife. <laughs> eh? And try and tie her without knowledge. Of. And see if she will submit to you. <laughs> I 
After the time this happened, Isaac was about 17, am I right? Abraham was about 100 and something. And he was tying the boy. And the boy obeyed. When he pulled the knife at, you see, all the boy needed to do was to help him. God bless you, man. No, see, I needed to tell you the obedience of Christ to his father. Jesus is the heir apparent, as it were. Isaac was the heir apparent to everything that Abraham had. Yet he was ready to submit. Abraham passed. So God was convinced that if Abraham, because a lot of times God would have called you and I to sacrifice something very precious to him. Thank God Abraham didn't tell Sarah. <laughs> Why are you laughing now? <laughs> Sister C, darling C. Hello, C. Hallelujah. I just heard God speak to me. Darling, what did God say? That I should kill. I should go and sacrifice. Hear me this morning, dear. Good afternoon, dear. A lot of times, God has called you to sacrifice something for Him. But you are choosing to discuss. That's why a lot of us are still where we are today. Imagine if Abraham had gone home to discuss with Sarah. No, how many of us, Mother Isaiah, will submit to that decision? Eh? <laughs> Did you ever say, Pastor said she will hear. You know, he never went home to discuss. And thank God for Isaac. Isaac, okay, we are going. See, where is he? He said the Lord will provide. And did God provide? Yes. He will surely provide. Go to Model 5. Now, Christ, the light of the world. Now, we're seeing Christ as a type of a light of the world. Now, we cannot overemphasize the importance of light. Some of us will remember photosynthesis D. Oh, come on now. How many of us went to private school like I did? How many of us went to private school like I did? Oh, a lot of you went to public school. Photosynthesis D. What is it? Eh? P. Mr. Niger D. Oh, sorry. Movement. Respiration. Nutrition. Irritation, growth, excretion, and what? Reproduction. Let everybody clap for yourself. So how many of us had F9 in biology? My brothers and sisters, Christ is the light of the world. Is the light of the world. It's only light that comes into darkness. And darkness cannot comprehend it. Even for God to create the world, the first thing God created was light. Hear me. Without Christ, you are in darkness. Without Christ, one is in darkness. It says, I'm the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall do what? Shall have the light of life. No other person could say that but Christ alone is the only light. And interestingly, it is the same light. And that's why the birth of Jesus was not shoot in secrecy. I mean, tell me, God can afford to have Jesus born in the best of hospital. Like if he was born in Harvard, Institute or whatever. How many people can assess that? If the birth of Jesus had been limited, like he was born in Ekoi, people in Nigeria may be a problem. 
But God so made sure that, so to show that he's the light of the world, he made him accessible to him. So if you want to access this light, anybody can have access to it. That was why the birth of Jesus was in the, the announcement of his death was in the open. Such was his birth too. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. When he was born, wise men came all the way from the east to pay homage to this light. That's why there's no amount of threat. There is no amount of Boko Haram that can quench this light. There is no amount of Guru Maharaj. That's why he's the only light. He's the only light. So if you if you have no, okay, there are several lights, but he, Jesus is the only true light. Is the only true light? Is the only true light? Now the question is: He said, "Whoever follows me shall not walk in darkness." That's what the question is. Can we assess you? Everything. You see, when you are doing things in the light, do you have reason to be ashamed? Yorubani majagbo I don't know the Hebrew version of that one. If you are shooting things in secrecy, then that means I'm not the true light. I mean, have you ever seen where it, anywhere there is darkness and light comes in? Now, let me ask you this. Do you know you are supposed to be carrying this light wherever you go? Huh? God bless you, mommy. Thank God for Bible today. He says, let your light so shine before men that what? They may see your good work. What he's saying is, if I am the light of the world, you are supposed to be carrying that light. <sighs> Praise the Lord. Jesus, the son of righteousness, Matthew 6. This son is singular. How many sons do we have in the world? How many? Let's be real. It's the same son in America. The same son in China. So, how many Jesus do we have? That's one. There cannot be two Christ. He's the only savior of the world. He's the only savior of the world. He's the son of righteousness. Now, light cannot survive without this, without the son. Am I right? Light cannot survive without the sun. What the sun does to the plant is that when the sun comes in, it aids the growth. Hear me this morning and this afternoon. You cannot survive without Jesus. You need him. Without the sun, it is impossible for the plant to grow. In the same vein, you can only depend on Christ for survival, particularly in the times and season we are in. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. The light of the sun rules the day. Anytime there is darkness, all you need is to just shine the light. Praise the name of the Lord. And this particular light neither sleep nor slumber. Praise the name of the Lord. Christ, the last Adam. Christ, by all standard, is qualified to be the last and victorious Adam. What the first Adam cannot do, the last Adam does, and it does better. There are three individuals, Adam, Abraham, and Jesus. And we have heard how they all failed. But Jesus lived and survived the test. So if you compare the, if you are to compare the temptation of Adam and Jesus, there are things you will see in common, but there are things you will begin to wonder because it's obvious Adam failed. But where Jesus passed, and most importantly, Jesus is the firstborn of all the dead. Some people die and come back several hours later, but they still die. But Jesus lives forever. Praise the name of the Lord. Christ, the bridegroom. Now, when 
particularly in the eastern part of the, this part of the world, dowry matters. Am I right? And the content of the dowry sometimes shows the seriousness of the marriage. You see, is it difficult for a noble woman to leave the house? Am I right, sir? Because he knows how much dowry. Now, how many of us know that as Jesus' groom, bridegroom, he paid a dowry on us? Huh? What dowry did he pay? His blood. How precious. Is the most precious blood. Now, let me ask you one thing this afternoon. If you have been treated to marry a woman, and the moment you guys are engaged, there are rules, Abby. That's the time you say, please, this your skirt is too short. Make it longer. Hello? I don't want to keep fixing your nails. I want it natural. Now, the same way, Jesus, being our groom, engages us and gives us rules through the Bible. And if you are engaged to marry a woman and you find this woman going wayward, it doesn't listen to your instructions, it disobeys your rule. What will happen to that arrangement? May Jesus not reject you as his Bible. Amen. Please, always know that a price was paid. A price was paid. And this has paid the ultimate price as a dowry. He paid with his life. So please, as much as possible, if natural man can divorce, that means Jesus can divorce you. Answer me now. Is it possible for him to divorce you? Why would, he, why would you divorce your wife? When he fails to do your biddings, when he fails to listen to you. Now listen to me. Hear me right. If you were Jesus and you are engaged and you are not doing what he expects you to do, wouldn't you think one day he can disown you? Why are we looking at me as I'm here? I'm daily. I'm daily. I'm daily. I'm daily. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, if man can divorce after so much commitment, May Jesus not divorce you. I said, may Jesus not divorce you. I just had to bring this in to know that, look, it's not, it's not the fact that the moment you became born again, you are engaged to Christ, you are his bridegroom. You must do his bidding. A lot of us women, the moment we got married, certain things changes. Am I right? You begin to do the things your husband wants. That you be? Yeah. Huh? Yes. I'm a lot of us. Marriage just changes our thinking, changes our orientation. Listen to me. If you are born again and you have nothing to show to Christ that these are things I used to do that I'm not doing, then they have not started this work. Because he paid the ultimate price. He paid the dowry to put you where you are. Praise the name of the Lord. Christ, the righteousness of God. Prior to Christ coming, if a man sinned, what do they do? He will bring a ramabi and the priest will lay his hands. Abi. you will begin to confess your sins. Then when you go out there and sin again, what happens again? Another arm. If they do that in this dispensation, every church would have to have an abattoir. About right? Because there will be, be so much arm. I mean, I, mean, so I mean, I can imagine what was happening in that dispensation. But when Christ came, he paid the ultimate price. Imagine if all of us were to bring ram. Eh? What did you say, sir? (laughs) 
Christ the lamp of God. Everything I'm saying is a type. Christ the lamp of God. Why do they have to call Christ the lamp of God? What's the difference between goats and lamb? Goat is what? Goat is stubborn and what? And disobedient. What about lamb? I haven't read. They said in two weeks, a goat is already learning something about sex. Unlike the sheep. That's why Christ is a lamp. Is a lamp. Is a lamp. Is obedient to the very end. And is humble. Any Christian that is called the lamb. If you are called, how many of us would like to be referred to as a goat here? Yeah? Okay, you want to be called a lamb. Are you proud? Are you humble? Mommy, are you saying yes or no? I say it boldly now. Are you proud? You're not proud. You've never said, do you know who I am? Hmm? That statement, do you know who I am? What does it depict? Pride! Who are you? My that is common. A lady came to me years ago. Pastor, which school did you go to? I said, is it about school? Is it about school? No, please, if Christ is the lamp of God, are we not supposed to take after him? If you put a lamp here, and I don't know much about animals, but the goat will be jumping all over the place. He wants to be saved. But the lamp will just... Christ, the refuge of his people. When the Israelites were going to the promised land, God, in his mercies, told Moses to create a refuge city. Deuteronomy 14 and Joshua 20, verse 7 to 9. And he actually instructed him to build six refuge cities. What were they meant for? He said, you remember when we were small and you, your mom wants to beat you? I don't know, a lot of you may not understand. If your mother wants to beat you and you run to grandma and you grab grandma what's next she won't breathe you again eh you see Christ, God made room for the fact that you can err but if you run to the refuge city you are shielded you are protected so Christ is our refuge when we err what do we do we run to him we hold on to him. And he forgives us. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So at the point of salvation, what we do is to run to Jesus as a refuge. I see the interesting thing which I need to say to you about this refuge city is that if a man had murdered and he ran to that refuge city, what happened? While he's in that refuge city, there's protection. Am I right? Imagine him coming out of that refuge city. Now listen to me. If you sin and you come out of Jesus, that opportunity, that, that, that time may be difficult for you. I don't know what I'm saying. Because it's easy to say, I can commit sin and get away with it. Now if you're in the refuge city, you are protected. Am I right? But the moment you step out, you become a victim. Imagine the man whose wife one had killed, standing by the gate. The moment he sees you, that's why you see we have to be very careful with this thing called sin. Sometimes God may give you another opportunity. Sometimes the other opportunity may not arise. I lost somebody two days ago and I'm still amazed. This guy from nowhere just called me on April 23rd 
and said to me, Pastor, I need to say something to you. He's not been coming to our church for one years. But I need to tell you, sir, that I got pregnant before my wedding. That is not even the issue. Her sister who brought her up felt insulted and said, lie, lie, you're not going to marry. The guest said she was going to marry. So because of that, she didn't go to the wedding and she stopped talking to her. But somehow, I just insisted that things must go right, that she should make amend. Little did they know, they finished fellowship Monday night, Abby. They finished fellowship around 11. This girl was the one that conducted the fellowship, only to be called two hours later that she had died. This was this week. So when we say we can sin and enjoy ourselves, what if that sin is the last? What would they, what is it, would be the essence of all this? That's why we have to be very careful. Because we hear of people dying, someday we just forget that we will come to our turn. This time last week, that girl was alive. She was the one that conducted the fellowship. But one thing that amazed that black guy, that girl, it was like she knew she was going to die. She was going around to make amend. Church, hold on to Jesus in the face of the worst of challenge. Knowing that as long as you are in that refuge city, you are protected. Praise the name of the Lord. Christ the priest. In the Old Testament, there were two order of priesthood. The priesthood of Melchizedek and the priesthood of what? Who? Aaron. Aaron's priesthood was in the order of pattern and why Melchizedek's priesthood was in order. Now what was the difference? Melchizedek collected as a high priest, Mercedes' priesthood can be compared to the priesthood of Jesus. Because he never died as it were. But what about Aaron's priesthood? For Aaron, he had to keep sacrificing animal upon animal upon animal. But for Jesus, it was just one ultimate sacrifice. His life. That was the ultimate. Now, what's the difference between the priesthood of Aaron and Jesus? Did Aaron die? Jesus never died. Somebody praise the name of the Lord. Somebody praise the name of the Lord. Aaron offered several blood. Jesus offered only one blood. Praise the Lord. Christ, the obedient son. Now, this is where I will go back to what I said before. Christ obeyed God to the very end. That was what we found Isaac doing. Isaac obeyed his father to the very last. Until the father, I'm sure by the time the father was losing the rope, he would be wondering, what is this man up to? Why is he not going to do it again? Because he could have said no. Jesus too could have said no. But Jesus knew he was going to die. Yet he came. He was obedient to the very word. Praise the name of the Lord. And we should give it. Not, it's not for us to say that Abraham alone obeyed God. It's for us to give credit to Isaac too. Because Isaac obeyed. He obeyed. And that we found in Jesus too. Praise the name. He never struggled. Praise the name of the Lord. Now let's look at Joseph as a type of Jesus. Joseph is very unique in every aspect of the way. He was born. He was loved by both Jacob and God. Joseph was raised in hatred. He was helped by God. Jesus was born of a virgin. He was hated by the people, but loved by God. Joseph was hated and rejected by his brothers. Just like Jesus was rejected too. The brothers of Joseph considered to kill him 
but eventually sold him to Egypt. In the case of Christ, he was sold, he was brutally killed by who? His own people. As Joseph was removed from the pit that he might be sold, God in his infinite power came out of the grave. After what? About many days? Three days. Joseph went to Egypt when rejected by his people. Christ also came to us while we reject him. Joseph was married to Asenite. Jesus is married to who? Who are the wives of Jesus here? Praise the name of the Lord. Joseph eventually got reconciled to his people. So also, at the end of time, Jesus will be reconciled to us. Finally, the type of the church. The moon is regarded as lesser light. Now, it is said that the moon does not have a light of its own. But what the moon does is to reflect the light of the sun. Christians, we do not have any power of our own. The power we have is the power that Jesus put on us. Praise the name of the Lord. Eve is the wife of Adam. Christ is the husband of the church. Praise the name of the Lord. Whatever you're able to do, always recognize that it's not by your power. Say, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit. So stop all these. Uh, Pastor, that was a good message. Ah, were you in church? Uh, <laughs> that was even part one of the message. That was part one of the message. If you have listened to part two, I mean, when people say that, you begin to wonder. That's how people jump all over the place now from one church to the other. Whereas that same local assembly that you are in, that's a miracle. That's a miracle. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Are you a type of Christ? Do your children know you and see Christ in you? The ultimate of this typology is you must be a type. What type are you? Because somebody won't say we are the Bible, we are the unwritten Bible, Abby. There are nations will go in future where Bibles are not available to be read. What would the people read? You. Are you a type of Christ? Are you a type of Christ in your marriage? Are you a type of Christ in your workplace, in the marketplace? Let's live with this. Are you representing Jesus in your works, in your deeds, in your actions? Bow down your head and ask God for grace. Ask him for grace. Ask him for grace. Ask him for grace. You have gone through this study of typology because God expects you and I to go out there and represent him. Are you representing him? Because some of the things our children do these days, they are things they see us do. Are you a type of Christ in your marriage? Please talk to God this afternoon, my brothers and sisters. I need to talk to God about myself. God wants to use you to spread the gospel. Not necessarily when you talk, but when people see you behave and act one way or the other. The apostles, they did not call themselves Christian. It was the people when they saw the way they behaved that said, these ones are Christ-like. Can that become your testimony today? You are Christ-like. Can it become your testimony as you attend Bible school, 20 Bible, Ryla 2022? Are you going to live here telling God, I want to be a type of Christ. I want to represent you. Father, we thank you. We appreciate you. 
We know the very essence of our garden is that we should represent you wherever we go. Father, behold, these are your children. They have come to Rila at this time. Some may never have realized that the only essence why, why you have kept them to now is that they can represent you and be a type of Christ wherever we go. Lord, I ask for grace for myself and I ask for grace for these your children that the grace to be a type of Christ, the grace to be who we are purpose, how you would love us to be wherever we go. Father, release unto us. For as many of us who either to had failed to represent you well, Lord, the grace to go out there and make amend, release unto us. Thank you for this privilege to learn at your feet. Forever, Lord, we are grateful. And for Ryla, Lord, take this institution beyond lips and boundaries. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let the testimony of this year be nothing compared with which, that which we do in Ryla 2023. We give you praise, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Any question, please? You know, we are not a student. If you ask me, I don't understand that. Any question, please? Any question? Yes, sir. If I don't understand, I'll ask somebody else to answer. That's, that's why we're in Bible school. This is Bible college. We're all students. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. During your the teaching, you... Yes made a, a comment or a statement saying um, during the test of um, Abraham that thank God he did not discuss with the wife. Mm. And I want to ask, do we now assume or presume that it's not all issues that we should discuss with our wives? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. No, I'm qualified. I'm 33 years in this race. So I'm qualified. Now, let me be real with you. Let me ask you. There are things that God will tell you as a person to do for him. And you'll be specific. Now, if, let me give you a typical example. You have just built a house. And your savings and everything you put to be in the house. And as you are going to, God said, hand over this. You see, a lot of time, hand over this property to so so and so person. You heard God clearly saying, This is a property, this property, hand it over to the church. Now, whom did you hear? Answer. You heard God. Now, if you subject that arrangement to people's opinion, what would they say to you? Huh? No, what would they say to you? I'm not talking wife now. What would they say to you? They will discourage you. And if care is not taken, what will you do? Now, you know, a lot of us are where we are today because we have subjected God's instruction to man. I'm not saying no. Because years ago, I wanted to sell my car because I didn't want my wife to know that I would have money. So when the mechanic came in the morning and they were expecting the car, I was pretending as if, or not to me, this guy scammed me. So I even went to the neighbor and said, when this guy come back, only for me to know that. When the guy, the guy came with somebody dressed like a dead sister, they dropped the car away till tomorrow. But that was something, a decision I took. There are some decisions I can take and I can involve my wife, but not where God speaks to you expressly. Imagine the day you gave your life to Christ. It was an altar call you heard and you walked out. You know, if you have so, do I go out? Uncle, do I go out? Ah. Some will say, you better don't waste your time. They will not remind you of Certain things they have committed. Sincerely, I'm not saying don't tell your wife. But I can tell you, having been in this race for 33 years, it is not all things. Particularly if you hear God, you will hear a voice behind you saying to you, this, this is voices. 
Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, if you, I don't understand, I want to say you're about. <laughs> okay, over, um, over time, I've had people say, um, you know, in the Old Testament, um, the prophets of Baal that were beheaded by Prophet Elijah, and then in the New Testament, um, the foreigner was beheaded. And then there has been this, I don't know if it's supposed to say, I don't know what it is, but there has been a, a, a linking that, okay, he was Elijah come back, and that's why he got beheaded in the New Testament. Sir, if it is true, is that, a, is that an antitype? So I don't want to get into an argument. Praise the Lord. As long as you can support it in the old and there's evidence in the new, that answers it. Because if we have to go into details, an argument will ensue. But whatever we call an a type must have representative representation in the old in the New Testament. Okay, praise God. Um, sir, I've heard people say, and even from a man of God. That as a woman, that it is not proper for you to make a vow or sow a seed without knowledge or permission of your husband. So I want to ask, is it right? Can't I make a vow as a wife without involving my husband? Praise the Lord. Now, I once had this kind of thing. A woman, they both have operate a joint account with the husband. And she went and so. Now, it's a two-way thing. Because I can tell you, I've lived in this part of eternity to tell you things. Oh, I once knew somebody whose husband gave money to buy property. And he took the money to church. The man took it in good faith. Today, they are reaping the result. In a situation where you are, you hate God. That's why the Bible says we should not be on you calling you with unbeliever. If your husband is genuinely born again and he hears God, God will reveal to him too. The reason why you have done what you have done is a situation where you don't, your husband has no understanding of God. You have challenge. There are things you could say to him. There are things you, the moment you say, God said I should do this. If he has understanding, there should not be any further argument. I don't know whether that answers it, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. It's the same thing. Yes, yes, ma'am. But not when you hear expressly from God. Yes, ma'am. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, thank you, sir. Thank but God. I have a different opinion. Mm. From the Bible, mm. we all assumed that Abraham did not tell the wife. That's mm. an assumption. It's not written black. Yes, and yes. I believe if my wife is truly my wife mm. and God truly spoke to me, mm. one way or the other, he speaks to my wife. I will give an example. I was to take a decision to give out an apartment to, a, to our nanny. I didn't know what to, how to tell my wife. But suddenly my wife brought up the matter. Mm. And while that was going on, our children also brought up the matter. At that point, we, I, I was convinced. So what I'm trying to say, if husband and wife are really working together, and God speaks to the man. Mm. I think the man is a Bible says he will not do anything without revealing it to his prophet. prophet. So, I agree with you. Sir. So for me, I want to believe because I don't want anybody to feel that Pastor well, is saying that don't confide with your wife or your wife don't confide with your husband. Nobody so, is saying that. That's what I'm trying to clear. So that mm. you pray and let God. If God speaks to me, there are things God will tell me. I say, God, if you're not saying, Confirm with, let my wife confirm it. There are things that God will speak to you expressly about and we expect you to take a decision on it. And believe it or not, like you said, if your husband and your wife are the same, God will reveal it to her too. We have not in any way to debate. We we'll just look at the, 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 the fact that they are waited for so long and we felt it is a thinking which may not be true. It may not be true. But going back to this parents, our women will say no. That's reality. So, certain things you know. There are some of us who know that if I mention these things to my wife, she'll say no. Look, it's as easy as you are, you are owing rent, you are owing this, and you are owing that. And you now say you want to pay tithes. Some women will say, oh, no, 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 no. 
God, they say, they say, God will understand. Have you had that words before? Sincerely, please, I'm not saying no, don't confer. But please, it shows how close to God we are in hearing him. And I pray God will give us grace to do his will at all times and seasons. Yes, sir. Pastor wants to say something. That's it. <laughs> they understand. Hallelujah. I think we're done. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. On the issue of I don't know if you if you can permit me to read a scripture, sir. Ah, we're okay. learning. Okay, please. Um, Numbers chapter 30. And I will read them um, verse 3, verse 10, and verse 11. Now, verse 3 talks about if a young woman makes a vow to the Lord or a pledge under oath. Why she's still living at her father's home. And her father hears of the vow or pledge and does not object to it. Then all her vows and pledges will stand. But if her father refuses to let her fulfill the vow or pledge, on the day he hears of it, then all her vows and pledges will become invalid. The Lord will forgive her because her father would not allow her to fulfill them. That's something. The Lord will forgive her. But the important thing is, if her father forbids her when he hears about it, she had done it. She had done it, and her father hears about it. <laughs> the Bible concludes that the Lord will forgive her. Man may say no. I have an experience of somebody that went and sold money from her account. The husband took the woman to the pastor. I said, the woman that my wife said, he sold certain amount. The guy said yes. The man said, did he tell you the money belongs to him? They have to return the, the man had to write a check for them. You see, let's be, I'm praying, I'm praying for myself, I'm praying for you. That as we journey in this king called marriage, God will reveal things to us. And God will draw us closer. They get to a stage in this walk that both of us will hear God clearly. You will hear God so much so that the sons are taking. Now, I love the fact that God revealed. Look at this example they gave. Before he's thinking about it, but while he's thinking, I was thinking about it, God has spoken to the wife. Believe it or not, I, I believed strongly that a lot of times God had asked us to do something. But because we go to weigh it with men, and men had discouraged us, we failed doing it, and things are not where we go. Today, look, in the old day, days, when we were in Freedom Hall, thank God, Sabi, I have evidences. We will come to church. Pastor T, then, people will go and people struggle to pay their school fees of the children. We, we, there, are, there was a day we had a problem in church. Our generator packed up. And on Sunday, somebody just came and dropped a brand new generator at the door of the church, at the gates of the church. Ah! I said to myself, if I was this one. And Pastor, you see, the truth of the matter is that a lot of times we have allowed situations to be cloud our hearing God. And we justify it. We justify it. Believe it or not, if we all will go back to that old time religion where we hear God for ourselves and we're convinced without any moral justification that this is God. Look, there are times you will make a vow and you tell your husband, God said I should do this. And the husband will say, ah! 
Because God will reward. I'm not saying don't listen to your husband or don't listen to your wife. All we're saying is may God bring both of us together to that position where we can all hear him and do his will. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. If I don't understand, okay, sir. No, I just want to contribute to God bless you, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, the Bible says, can two work together? Except they agree. Except they agree. Mm -hmm. I remember that during my card selling, I've been married for 12 years. I'm still, uh, I'm learning. Yeah, baby. They told us that can two work together unless they agree. The, the Bible also says you are naked and not ashamed. Mm. So I interpreted it this way. that It means I can tell my wife anything. Yes. Okay. So if I tell her, we are Yorubas, and I tell her that my sisters, because we are fairly large in my house, predominantly women, and then the men are younger, and I'm the youngest. So I told my wife recently that my sister said, Lagbar alone, tell me I show my dad that When I told her, she interpreted it the other way. Show me, show my dad that tell her. <laughs> so now I'm learning in my brain that it means, babe, I won't be telling you things again. Because if I tell you, penalty. <laughs> One you upside in the ball you talk back. Okay, there's opportunity to play left wing. You refuse. I won't tell her things again. I've made up my mind. She told me on my way as I was driving here. I spoke to her on the phone. Ah, that's the band said, that one alone, tell me I show my dad that. Oh, oh Bini. Now, sir, another one point I want to make. Sir, sir, you can sir? I correct something? You should not have. That statement is derogatory. It shouldn't have been said. You would have, you are, you create enmity between them. There are ways to correct. Yes, sir. There are ways, you see, particularly where it involves your own people. Praise the Lord. Please respect, respect this 63 year old man. Who, sir, your sister said, Tell me, I show my dad. And yes, that his own sister said, there. by the grace of God, your wife is telling me, yes. uh, by the grace of God, your wife will be a good person. No? Yes. You now went and told your wife, you'll be a good wife. You now went and told your wife that my sister said. <laughs> no, sir. Yes, sir. God bless you, sir. We're learning. Yes, we're learning. She's made it as a reference to a statement. Hey, that statement did not come. Okay, oh yeah me, oh yeah me, that that's ah. so next time I will make that. Ah. Now I want to go into the aspect of uh, God bless you, sir. Let's let's listen. We are learning, you know. Yes, sir. And let's be real. I mean, they shall always play. Okay, please let's go on, sir. Okay, sir. Let's go into the aspect of sowing seeds. Mm. Now, my immediate elder sister goes to a particularly well known church that mm. is not redeemed. In fact, she goes to Christ's embassy. I will tell you my own. If they wake up Lola today and say, Oma Lola, sow everything, she will sow it. And she will, equally, Peter will know. Her husband's name is Peter. Equally, as God is telling her, he's telling Peter. I want to give you an instance. My sister has cancer. And last year, she gave out a portion of her inheritance. And to us, we were shouting. She gave out 9.8 million. I'm telling you the life story. Let's learn. When she went overseas for like almost a year, you know, you go to see the consultant, your bill comes three months after. So we were contributing and we were paying the bills. But when God will surprise her, they now told her that, Pastor, you are back in Nigeria now. What you owe for this drug is 35,000 pounds. You know what the church did? They told her, Lola, you've been working with us in church since you graduated from Osu. They paid that 35,000 pounds off for her. For giving out 9.8, she gave that one out. Now, every month, she buys that drug for 30 days, 1.1 million, 250. So if we have good health, let's reference God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, please, I'm telling you a true life. So my sister attends Christ's embassy. Her husband is an allergy. Her husband lives in Lagos. She lives in London. 
The man sent money to her to buy a house. My sister took the money and sowed it as a seed in church. Beloved, if you see where they're living in, where they stay in London today, you will fear God. You will fear. I don't know, somehow the husband just came to that. And the man did not say one word. Church, yes, I like you. Believe it or not, it pays to serve God, it pays to hear God, it pays to obey God. You see, this is coming now because some of us need to learn. And you are here this afternoon, it's like you are here by accident, but God is speaking to you, specifically concerning a situation that you have been hearing over and over. Sometimes God is asking so into the life of someone. Ah, no. People say that. I mean, I came in here today. It's my first time here. And I was, wow. This is a church under our province. And I know this is God. This can only be God. And the same way God wants to use you and I. I mean, if somebody had not, somebody could have this idea as it were. It means to sustain or to bring it to pass. But whereas you have, you see, it's so interesting. He said it. I've said it. He said it. Go out there and let's see what we'll do. My prayer is that 2022 Ryla will be a testimony for you. For some, you think I came by accident. For some, it came because I didn't plan to. But I pray that this particular session, sir, this particular set, I learned this is your first physical class this year. The third one, right? Third, third, Trinity. This is the third one. You are in Trinity Temple. You'll have a testimony. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Let the, I know you're in a hurry. Let the love of praise for Pastor. Praise the Lord. Pastor is awesome. Do you know when he came here? He came here during Pastor Fabi Quitton's um, lecture. I sorry, talking about why. So, and when I told him he was having this lecture some days ago, I gave him the time. He said, I'll come early. I was watching out. I'll tell you while I was watching out. The first time Pastor took this, this lecture, I was here live. He came early. In fact, when he came to that time, he came before anybody came, he was there. He told us something. He was very angry that we didn't come on time. He said he had a covenant with God that if he comes to any program late, God should, God should take his life. I, 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 that one was too much. Raising standards. Since then, I've been watching pastor. So when he came today, I said, oh, I can't remember. If somebody has, he, has, he, has, he has to raise his standards. I'm trying to talk about this. Sorry, sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Don't mind me. He has to raise some standards of his life. So I don't know what you, what, what you want to, from, what you are going to learn. We are here to learn today. I don't know what you appeal from what he has told you. Let us be able to thank God for his life. For the grace of God upon his life. For the anointing of God upon his life. Father, I want to thank you, Lord, for your son, for the grace of God, for the anointing, for the power, for the revelation, for the insight, O oh Lord. For sustaining him over the years, O oh Lord. Over 33 years he has been with you, Lord, Daddy. We thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. For how you have been using him. In different countries, different places, oh Lord. Father, we say we thank you. We appreciate you. You are just awesome. You are wonderful. Thank you for his family. Thank you for his parish, oh Lord. Thank you for his ministry, yes, sir. Thank you for all everything you have been using for him, oh Lord. Thank you for Ryla, oh Lord. Thank you, Lord, because one of our advisors in Ryla, one of our think tank members in Ryla. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your son. Thank you, thank you, Lord. He's a pillar in, in his promise. Pillar everywhere I've been going to, Lord. Take all the glory, Almighty Father. It's awesome, we are praying. Father God, Pastor God, bless in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So shall it be. Praise the Lord.